When's he gonna be there? I don't believe this. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Look, I need to speak to him as soon as possible. Can you make sure he rings me, please? It's urgent. Okay, Tom. Oh, We're gonna lose the house, aren't we? They're not even taking calls from us. Look, we just need to speak to this Mr. Thomas fella. We'll get hold of him, the savvy, even if it means us going down to the Builder Society and demanding to see him. But they've already told us they don't want to know, Ed. Yeah, but things are different now, aren't they? We've got the money from the Aussies, so we can clear the arrears, no sweat. But we don't own this place anymore, do we? It's the Building Societies. Yeah, I know that, but I still reckon we can sort it. We've got 25 grand in the bank. They've got to listen to but us. it's not enough. We need 50 grand. We need to be able to buy this outright. Listen, we've still got a chance. <laughs> And it's our only hope, because if we don't get this place back, we'll be renting. We're bad debtors. We'll never get another mortgage in our lives, so we can't give up on it now. Hiya. All right, son. Hiya. Um, it, just cereal for breakfast, I'm afraid. Haven't we got any bread? Oh, I haven't had a chance to do a shop, love. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll nip round the trading post, get us a loaf, eh? Get some bacon while I'm there as well, son. Oh, bacon both of you is nice, son. Back in five minutes. Who was that my dad was on the phone to? Oh, just someone from work, I think. It's been some sort of problem. All right. Just sounded dead important, like. Yeah, well, you know your dad. Yeah. It's so, you and my dad, is everything all right, like? Um, yeah. Why? I was just asking. It's, it's been murder here the last few months. Hey. It's going to be all right, I promise you. Me and your dad back together. Us all living here in the one house. Just like a proper family again, eh? Yes, yes, this is the same Ron Dixon who rang five minutes ago, and... Hang on, just a second. Hello? Hello? Oh, that's charming, eh? Don't worry about me. It's only my son who's festering in the bamboo cage. Still can't get through. Them peas, it's easy to get hold of the Pope. Just these time. Oh, Eddie, um, you haven't signed this, have you, mate? Ron, I've been through this with you already, mate. Yeah, I know you have, Ed, but this is a different one. It's just for Mike. And what about the car, girl? We have to drop her. You what? Well, people weren't signing because of her, Ed. Come on, mate, we all know who her dad is, don't we? Jimmy Cockle is a well-known drug dealer, and our Michael is clean. We can get more signatures for him this way, get him home quicker. United we stand, eh? Go on, sign away. Look, Ron, my heart goes out to you, mate, but... Well, just look at it from where I'm standing, eh? Come here, Daddy. I mean, I know you hate the cork hills. Everyone does. They're a gang of druggy scumbags. Bev. But this is just for Mike. Bev. What? Oh. Hi, Jackie. So this is what it's come to, is it? Slagging us off in front of all sorts. Hey, this is nothing to do with me, love. Hey, listen, Jackie. No, you listen. I can understand you, Ace and Jimmy. But I would have thought you'd have had a bit more respect for me and our Lindsay. Standing there, sticking the knife in. God, butter wouldn't melt, would it? You what? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll come back for me change later on, okay? Poor Lindsay, this. Poor Lindsay, that. I'm sick of hearing about it. It's because of your precious daughter that Mike's in prison. She used that poor lad, set him up properly, so don't come running in here asking for sympathy. God, they broke the mold when they made you, didn't they? You what? Hey, hey. Take it easy now. You're more hard faced than the man with the iron mask. I know your sort. One sniff of trouble and you're straight in there. You thrive on it, don't you? Don't talk to me like that. You, some sort of gangster's mole. You little cow! You Get off! What's going on here? You better ask me, mates, hadn't you? Well, will someone tell me what's going on? You better go after the Sinbad. Yeah. Hi. I'm back. I said it would be, didn't I? Percy? <sighs> you know, the garden out there is like concrete. Sinbad should have had your sprinkler system in by now. I'm going to keep chasing him up. Yeah, well, Dad, to be honest, I'm not really sure it's worth worrying about. Yes, but if we have another scorching summer like yeah, last year... I didn't mean that. It's just that, well, everything's up in the air. God knows where I might be by the time next summer comes. Right. You're not thinking of moving, are you? No. Yes, I... I don't know. 
Patsy, listen. This situation between you and Max, I'm, I'm not going to suggest you just kiss and make up, but please, at least try and talk to each other. Dad, he just walked out on me. I know, and I know how hurtful that must be. Yeah, well, what am I supposed to do? Just go to him, cap in hand? I know it's hard, and I know how proud you are. Yeah, well, we all know where I get that from, don't we? Well, then, just listen to the voice of experience. My God, the number of times I've been too proud and too pig-headed to back down. It's cost me a lot, you know that. I just don't want the same thing to happen to you. And I know it's the oldest cliche in the book, Patsy, but please do think of the children. I mean, haven't they suffered enough already? Yes, I know that, Dad, but what am I supposed to do? Swallow your pride. Go to the restaurant and talk to Max. Hey, is that bacon butties I can smell? Aye, aye, here comes the blood down. Sorry, they're all gone. Oh, well, I'll just settle for a cup of tea, then. Come out, son. You can give us a hand fixing the fuel pump on the bike. I'll see you later, love. Oh, and, uh, if that Thomas fella ring. Yeah, I'll give you the show, too. Yeah. Hey, mind your shoes are clean before you come back in here. Yeah, we know. You don't want oil on your carpets. <laughs> Just like the good old days, eh? You're all, all getting on like a house on fire? Yeah. Oh, we're all trying really hard. Hey, sis, I'm made up for you. After all you've been through, you deserve a bit of happiness. Yeah, well, we're not out the woods, yeah. We could still lose this place if we don't get hold of this Mr Thomas fella and sort the arrears and the mortgage out. Oh, God, what are you going to do? I don't know. Eddie reckons we've still got a chance, but they don't seem to want to know us, no matter how much we've got in the bank. Happened to a girl I used to work with. Her fella lost his job. Then they got behind just like you and Eddie. Ended up losing the house. She was devastated. Couldn't get another mortgage, couldn't even get a credit card. She was on a blacklist, like. Yeah, if you want this place back, you're gonna have to pay full whack, you know. If only the Aussie had offered us 50. That's me and fault. I should have had the nerve to stand up to him. 50,000. That would have put things back to the way we were when we won the lottery. Hey, and Eddie, holly. Second chance. Well, at least you're halfway there. Listen, don't say anything to Ollie about the house. He doesn't know. Just when everything was starting to go right for you as well. I know. And Ollie was only saying this morning how much he loved living in this house. God, if you lose this place, break his heart. Excuse me, can I help you? Yes. I was looking for Max. Cutting the cork heels off like that. Not very Christian, if you ask me. I didn't realise anyone was asking you. Dee, we're only thinking of Michael, love. We're doing the best we can for him. But at times like these, you must come together, put any bad feeling behind you. Yeah. Well, we're not all candidates for the sainthood, are we? We can't all be as forgiven as you. That's just what I expect from you. If you need me, I'll be around the house. Don't worry, we won't. So you're going to the casino again? Yeah, well, it's 70s night in the club and it runs itself, so I thought I'd get a couple of hours out. Getting a bit of a habit, isn't it? Oh, once a week. Ah, sounds like you're on the slippery slope to me. I mean, you heard what happened to Rosie Banks, didn't oh, you? Oh, get away, will you? Look, I limit myself to £50. So you're on for it or not? Nah, can't we all, mate? I'm brassic. Anyway, I'm gonna be working up tonight. <laughs> and you reckon I've got it, Abbott? Ah, I just wanna get fit, stay in shape, that's mm. all. You sure you don't fancy a coffee? Quite sure. He shouldn't be too long. Said he was just popping out to the wine merchants, but, uh, you know what Max is like. <laughs> I certainly do. Well, listen, I'm sure you must be busy. I wouldn't like to hold you up. I can spare a few minutes for a chat while the cat's away, hmm? Indeed. It must be quite a surprise, you finding me here. Nothing Max does surprises me anymore. <laughs> quite the one, isn't he? Anyway, if you are still here when he gets back, if you'd just... I'll tell him you called. Thanks. And if I miss him here, I'll catch him at the flat later. Sorry? You didn't know he'd moved in with me and the children? No, I, I, um... Uh... It's great with me working here as well. I'd better go. But you don't want to hang about? Say hello to Max? See myself out. Yes, yes, certain. Right, we'll see you tomorrow, then. 
And thank you. Thank you very much. Yes! Well? James Payne, he wants us in London first thing in the morning. He's got us an appointment with the minister from the Foreign Office. Go away. Straight up. Oh, love, that's brilliant. See, I told you, all the hard work is paying off already. Mind you, that's the good news. What's the bad news? We've got to take the Corkles with us. He's left for the day. But I left a message. Well, why hasn't he done anything about it? Look, surely there must be someone who can do something today. Hey, hang on. Look, we've got an eviction notice hanging over us. Hey! I don't know what else I can do. All right. God, they're not taking us seriously. 25 grand we've got in the bank and they still won't listen to us. They probably think we're trying to delay the eviction or something. We've lost it, Rose. Oh, there's got to be something you can do. They've got us over a barrel. All this over three lousy grand. Ollie, he doesn't know you. Yeah, well, I'll have a way with him. No, Eddie. Eddie, leave it for now, eh? Love, the lad's got a right to know. It's his home as well. Yeah, I know. But just let's wait till we've all calmed down. Just leave it a couple of days. I mean, you never know. Something might come up. Susanna's working at the restaurant. Helping Max with his tax returns. Oh, I see. No, Dad. No, Dad, you don't. Because I'll bet that's not all she's helping him with. You see, Max isn't staying in some hotel. Max is staying with Susanna. All very cosy. Oh, dear. Didn't waste much time, did she? As for Max, <laughs> straight out of my bed, straight into hers. Oh, come on, you can't be sure of that. Oh, for God's sake, Dad, how can you be so naive? And there's me chasing after him. God, I, I feel such a fool. Patricia, you're upset. Upset? I'm furious. Well, he's done it for me, hasn't he? Made my mind up. There's no way back from this. Max and I are finished. Over. Come to apologise to my Jackie, have you? Well, you've had it. She's at the supermarket. Apologise? What for? OK, OK. We haven't come round here for the Barney. Yeah, well, she started in the first place. Beverly, please. Look, all right, things may have got a bit out of hand this morning, so... Well, did you tell your Jackie that we're sorry? Aren't we, Bev? I said, aren't we, Bev? Yeah, I suppose so. I've just spoken to James Payne on the phone. Bully for you. Tell him how many signatures you got for your mic, did you? They just hang on you. Now, I've got some good news here. Do you want to hear it or not? What news? He's fixed us up a meeting with someone from the Foreign Office and he wants us in London first thing tomorrow. Us? Yeah, us. You and Jackie included. Well, that's great, isn't it? This is it. The Foreign Office. That's the breakthrough we've been waiting for. Yeah, well, fingers crossed, our Michael could be on his way home soon. <laughs> yeah. I'll Lindsay too. OK, well, you'd better catch up with your Jackie, hadn't you? Get packed. We'll, um, leave you to it. I tell you what, I'll book us a cab, eh? Get us to the station. You yeah, are? Well, we might as well all travel down together now we're talking again. And I'll fix us up with a hotel boom while I'm at it and all. Eh? Hiya. Oh, hi. Hey, sorry to disturb you, but can I have a quick word? They're coming. Oh. I'm uh, just on my way out. Yeah, to the casino. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Sinbad told me you were going. That's what I want to talk to you about. You what? I know it's a bit of a cheat, like, but um, I was wondering if I could come with you. To the casino? Yeah, if you could just sign me in, like. Um, well, do you think that's a good idea? You what? Look, I don't want to stick my nose in, but... Well, I heard all about you, you know, gambling away all the lots of your money. I'm over all that now. It's not a problem anymore. Well, what do you want to go to the casino for? Just want to look round the place. What for? All right, all right. I'll come clean. Me and Eddie, whiskins. Well, I mean, going down there and throwing all your money away like that, well, that's not going to help, is it? No, no, I'm not going to gamble. They're advertising for croupiers in the Echo, and I'm looking for a part-time job, so if I like what I see, like. Oh, right. But 
Well, you're not working in a casino after what happened to all the lottery money. It's not a problem anymore. I'm getting help. I can handle it now. Confront it head on. Well, I don't know, Rosie. Look, I'm in and out in five minutes. And don't worry. I'll stay out your way. Ah, oh, all right, then. Come, Ed. Smashing shiny this day. Loads of mustard, just the way you like it. Yeah. Mustard? What else is on it? Just a bit of ham. Uh, sorry, not allowed in this house. There you go. Oh, lovely. The mustard shiny. I'll make you a nice cup of tea. Uh, I can do that. After all, you are a guest here. It's really good news. This meeting in London, things are really beginning to move. It's not before time, though, is it? Just why I didn't bother unpack. Why are you going straight back to Bolton? Hey, you must really be missing Tom, wasn't you? Got the hots for him. I was talking about this trip to London. What? You going to London? Of course I am. Why? Well, for the meeting tomorrow. <laughs> you can't. I'm going. Well, so am I. Michael is my son. I've got a right to be there. Yeah, uh, dear, I'm sure Bev didn't mean anything, but, um... Well, it might be better if you did stay here, love. I want to be at that meeting. Yeah, I know you do, but... <laughs> we're only expecting four of us. Well, you and me will go with Jackie and Jimmy. What? And leave me here? No way! Bev, Michael is my son. And Ron is my fella. He needs me. I'm sure I can look after Ron for a couple of days. He is still my husband. Hey, you. You keep your hands off him. Isn't one fella good enough for you? <laughs> There's no talking. What's that supposed to mean? All right, all right. I think we've had enough arguments for today, haven't we? Look, dear, I know this is really important to you, but well, Bev's been in on the campaign from the start, love. It wouldn't be fair to leave it at home. So you're going to leave me here instead? It's not like that. And besides, someone's going to have to stay here and man the phone in case we get any more news from Thailand, don't they? And we've got to carry on the petition, haven't we? Someone's got to be here to do that. Yeah. I mean, you'd really be helping Michael that way, wouldn't you? And besides, we need you in church praying for him. You're the only one who can do that. Well, if you put it that way... OK, I'll stay, I suppose. I'll go on and pack my bag. Just think. Be able to do a couple of days in the shop as well. Have you seen enough? Um, not quite. I'm going to try my luck. Oh, I thought you were just coming down into a... To... Just one bag. That's all it'll take. How much is there? 25,000. Oh, hey, look, you're not going to bet all that, are just you? Just one bet, that's all. I've... Just got to pick the right moments. You're mad, Rosie. Don't do this. You can't do it. Straight 50-50, all or nothing. It's my only chance. Rosie, you can't. I can. I have to. Now, see this? Yeah. Well, that's the filter. And it's knackered. And that's why the pump didn't work. Mm-hmm. Got all clogged up with guns in there. So, you just clean the pump out, get a new filter, then Bob's your uncle. Didn't know I had an uncle, Bob. Very funny. <laughs> yeah, I'll get that son. Oh, we better get this mess cleared up and all before your mum gets back, yeah? <sighs> Hello. You are? Oh, bloody hell. Uh, look, look, look. T ten minutes, Ted. Just give us ten minutes, yeah? Oh, the bike, it's not working. What is it? What's wrong? Not now, son, eh? Not now. Hey, come on, buddy. We're gonna miss the train. It takes it to town, pal. Hey, aye, aye. What are you playing at? Hey, that's our taxi. Not anymore, it isn't. What's going on here? Look, I'm sorry, love, but I've got to get into town. You're gonna have to get out. I'm going nowhere. Oi, we've got a train to catch. Yeah, and this is a massive life and death, pal, believe me. Look, are you getting out or are you coming with me? You what? Hey, Eddie, just stand on a minute. That's one thing I can't do, mate. Look, put your foot down, pal. Drive like the bloody wind. Where are you? Bev? Yeah, she can get! Amy, Bev! What's going on now, Ed? Hey, where are you going with our taxi? Come back, yeah? Eddie! Thanks. 
Rosie, this is madness. I know, well, being on the streets, that's madness. This isn't going to solve anything, is it? Throwing 25 grand away. But I'm going to win. I lost at that lottery money, but I've got a second chance, and I'm going to take it and put everything right. The house, everything. I've just got to wait for the right moment. That's all. That's it. Hang on, eh? Think about what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. What if you lose? Look, this is my money. I got this because of what they did to my body. So you just want to sling it all on there? I have to. 50-50, my last chance. Red. You what? It's gonna be red. This is it. Those are your cards. One there, that's it. That's me and gambling finished. Come on, Eddie, where are you? I've just spoken to Mum. Did she ask after me? Of course she did, Dad. You're still married. <laughs> For what it's worth, yes. Patsy, you're not playing Cupid, are you? Trying to get us back together again? No. That's that's not why I phoned her. I, I wanted to tell her that the kids and I were going back to France. Another holiday? You only just got back here. No, not a holiday, Dad. We're going back to live there. To France? But why? Because, apart from you, there's nothing to stay here for. Patsy, that... Listen, I, I know you were terribly upset after seeing Susanna, but is that really any reason to leave the country? Dad, I came back here last week to try and sort things out with Max, and all we've managed are a few bad-tempered grunts. Max is with Susanna now. Time to move out. But France... I'm sorry, Dad. It'll be a good move for me and the kids, and we'll be near Mum. I see. Patsy, are you... are you... really sure about this? I'm really sorry, Dad, but my mind's made up. The children and I, we're leaving. It's not too late, you know. You can still take the bet off. I'm gonna win. I know I am. Oh, my God, Rosie. Take your bets, please. <laughs> Rosie! No more bets. I'm sorry, sir. No more bets. Too late, Eddie. Too late. Pigeons. Oh, yeah. I'll use this anky. Look at the mess. There you go. Place the time getting this dry clean, won't it? Here you are. I'll take a picture of you with Buckingham Palace. The Queen might come out and give us a wave. Bev, will you put that away? We're not on holiday. Spoil sport. We're here to get our mic alarm in case you've forgotten. Yeah, well, I'm only trying to kill some time, aren't I? Where the hell have the other two got to? I distinctly told them nine o'clock sharp, the appointment's in half an hour. Well, if they can't be bothered to turn up on time. What, you reckon we ought to head off without them? Well, why not? If they do turn up, there'll only be trouble. They won't be doing your mic any favours. Yeah, but what about that fella down the foreign office? He wants to see a lot of us. 
Yeah, but if they haven't showed. Besides, if we go by ourselves, we can tell them the truth about the core kills, can't we? Put your mic in a better light. It is that, isn't it? But I mean, they are late. So what are we waiting for? Let's get down to the Houses of Parliament. Get our Michael on the next flight home. Go on. Perfect timing, eh? Oh, well, All right. We're not late, are we? Only about half an hour. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, bloody hell, I don't believe it. Hey, it's an omen, though. Well, oh, that's what it is. No, it's dead lucky off in a bed. You know, aren't you? Oh. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? What the places? How do you know? What are you doing? Throwing it all away! Everything! Just like you threw that 25 grand away! Please! What's he talking about? Well, go on, tell him! Tell him how you lost that home on a roulette table! What? Everything's so gone! The house! Everything in it! We've got nothing left! We're hopeless! You lost all that money in the <sighs> casino. £25,000. Well, go on! Go on, tell him what you said! Tell your son how you threw away everything gambling! Everything we had! Any chance we had to make a fresh start! Go on! I thought I could win! Oh, have you heard this? You thought you could win? But you didn't think to ask us what we thought, did you? Hey, never mind us. We just live here. Dad, stop it, please. How I ever trusted you. Eddie, don't. Oh, all that crap you gave me about being open with each other. Talking to each other about problems, confronting them. And then you sneak off behind me back and pull a stunt like that. I can't believe it. What the hell were you thinking of, Rose? And I just wanted to save the house. I thought I... God, I... give me strength! After all we've been through, all the lies, the stealing, I thought we'd hit rock bottom, couldn't get any worse. That's what I thought. But I was wrong, wasn't I? Because I didn't realise how low you could get! You're a waste of space, Rose! No! It was my money! I got it because oh. I wanted it to my body! I let them buy me off! That's it, go on, go on. Blame everybody else! It's always someone else's fault! I'm sick! I've heard about that operation! I'm sick of you using an excuse! Dad! You're a liar and you're a loser! Uh. <clears throat> Do you think we should phone the police? We could give it a couple more minutes. These hurricanes can blow themselves out pretty quickly, you know. What's going on? Big row in the banks. It's mass. They throw some stuff through the window. Oh, well, that's one way of doing your spring cleaning, I suppose. <laughs> I think perhaps we'd better go inside, Katie. Come on. Another marriage on the rocks, eh? Must be catching. Oh, no! Oh, for a sharp exit. Um, listen, Kate, I'm going to nip round to the shop, so you keep an eye on Louise for us. What are you doing? Getting away from you! Dad, stop it! Look, you're upset, Arlie! Oh, I'm upset, Arlie! Listen to her, Miss Bloody Perfect! Never put a foot wrong! Oh, God, we just talk about this! Talk what? So you can tell me more lies? Go behind me back again! Hey, you're no one to talk when it comes to going behind people's backs! You what? Before you start pointing the finger and out the insults, you want to put your own house in order! No way, there's no need to bring any of that up! Oh, what's she talking nothing, about? Nothing, son, forget Nothing! It. You can't sleep with your own daughter and not nothing! <sighs> oh, Rosie. You what? Look, son. You and Sarah? Oh, Carl, Sarah! No, no, look, son, I know it must sound... I don't believe you two. My mum's a gammon addict. I mean, that's some sort of pervert. No, listen, listen, Look, please. I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, get off me. Don't touch me. You're disgusting, the perrier. You make me sick. Oh, Lynn, please, Don't listen. bother. I don't want to hear it. I'm finished with the perrier. I never want to see it again in my life. Nicholas Chambers is a very important man. That's good to hear. Yeah, well, don't want to waste our time with some no-mark, do we? Quite. Anyway, as I was saying, he's got a lot of clout in the Foreign Office. It's very important to make a good impression on him in there today. You could have worn a suit. You what? Oh, that's such a policy for the leather. He's Ladies, gone there. Please, please. Can we get on with our briefing? Because we haven't got very long. Now, you tell Chambers exactly what you told me. We weren't very long in there, so let's be succinct. Straight to the point. 
So you reckon this bloke can get Michael Lindsay home? If you didn't think you could help, I'm quite sure he wouldn't waste his time meeting you today. OK, let's go and uh, let's make a good impression, shall we? God, I'm dead ashamed of them the way they've been carrying on. I hate living near with them. I'm never going back. You'll have to go back. I can't. You don't know. I can't go back. Well, where will you go? Anywhere, as long as it's not there. I'll sleep rough if I have to. Now, don't be daft. I can't I stay here with you? Joking on you. The six of us here as it is. I'll sleep on, on the floor or something. Sorry, Leo. Sorry. It's out of the question in the circumstances. It's totally impractical, I'm afraid. Listen, once you've cooled down, you may feel different about things. No way. I'm finished with them. I mean it. I'll get it. Is there a thing here? Terry, just the man. I mean, they're just two innocent kids. They've never harmed anybody in their lives. That's right. A couple of lovely kids. They don't deserve this. God, if you saw the state of that prison, yeah, it's not fit for a dog, you know, mate. And you need dogs out there, don't they? Quite. But I think Mr. Chambers is more concerned with the actual specifics of the case. Indeed. Now, James has filled me in with most of the details. Seems to me you really do need to find this Gary Stanley character. Oh, uh, Stanlow. Sorry? Uh, Gary Stanlow. Yeah, listen, bit of a uh, problem with that. See, he's done one. I'm sorry? He's absconded. Whereabouts unknown. Oh, I see. Well, without his evidence, I'm not sure how far we can proceed. You see, you don't have a very strong case at the moment. Yeah, but you know what's happened, don't you? We told you. It's not me that needs to be convinced. It's the Thai authorities. Well, can't you do that? You know, put a word in life? Look, I'm going to the Thai embassy when you leave here, but uh, I'm afraid I can't just put in a word, as you say. It's rather more complicated than that. Well, do you want us to come with you? Yeah, listen, we can fill him in on what's gone on. Look, there is a certain protocol to be observed in these situations. Um, what do you mean? Well, you can't just turn up en masse and demand your children's release from jail. There are several things to be taken into consideration. A case like this could damage relations between the two countries. I'll tell you something, pal. This country's going down the pan. Great Britain, 50 years ago, we'd have sent the frigates up that Yellow River and had them out like that. I'm afraid the days of gunboat diplomacy are long gone. Things are rather more subtle now. Oh, yeah. Building dams for dodgy arms deals, lying in each other's pockets. It's in the papers every day. Mr. Dixon, could we stick to the point, please? The point is, two innocent kids are stuck behind bars in some dump of a country. You don't seem to be able to do anything about it. Without Mr. Stanlow, it seems unlikely. But... Bloody marvellous! How did you let that dipstick out of your sight? Oh, don't be starting all that again, eh? Here's the goal, girls. What did you say? Ladies, please, that's quite enough. Thank you. Now, I suggest you go home to Liverpool, and I'll see what our friend in the Thai embassy has to say. Hey, I am going nowhere, pal. And we'll all stay in here till you get back. Well, I, I really don't think that... We'll stay all day if we have to. OK, look. Uh, you go and get yourself some lunch. And uh, if all goes well, how about we meet back here again later in the day? Uh, is there somewhere James can get in touch with you? Yeah, yeah, I've got uh, my mobile with me. Business. Of sorts. So, until we meet again. So, is that it? For the moment, yes. Hey, hey, I'm gone. We haven't finished yet. We haven't gone through what you're going to say. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. I think you'll find I'm fully acquainted with the necessary procedures. Good news, Leo, son. Accommodation crisis over. Terry here has offered to provide you with a roof over your head. Let me stay with you. Well, if you don't mind, I don't. Nah, I'll be boss staying over the shop's sake. I told you would be made up. Well, it looks like I've got myself a lodger. Oh, there's just one house rule. No letting off in the front room, all right? Mr. Chambers is an extremely busy man, and that sort of behaviour is only going to harm your case. You need him on your side. Well, she started it. Hey, it wasn't me, was it? Look, if you carry on like this, you're never going to get your children home. We're sorry. Yeah, it's right. We've got to forget our differences, haven't we? For our Lindsay and your Mike's sake. Time to bury the ashes. Yeah. So no more arguing. All right. All right. Good. Well, uh, I've got rather a lot of work to do this afternoon, so uh, I've got your mobile number. 
Are you not coming for the bevy, Jim? You're not my only constituents. I do have other work to do. I'm sure you'll manage on your own. Oh, it's the weekend. Everyone goes out on a Friday night. Not when you've had the week I have. Oh, come on. What are you, a man or a mouse? Squeak, squeak. All right, we'll knock town on the head. Just go next door and have a few drinks after work. You're not going to give me a minute's peace, are you? Probably not. All right, just a few drinks with you and the girls after work, but that's it. Anything to keep the peace and quiet, hey? Oh, I'll get that. It might be my dad drinking from London. Hello? All right. Yeah, just a sec. Hiya. Oh, are you? Hey, if you're after an appointment, I'll have to wait till next week now. We'll chuck a block over the weekend. Oh, right. Uh, no, it's just passing, really. Thought I'd pop in. Dad promised he'd ring, cos I wonder what's going on. Hey, they wouldn't have asked them to go all the way down there if they didn't have some good news, would they? I think so. Um, anyway, I was wondering if anyone fancied going out, you know, for a few drinks. Oh, right. Uh... We're all popping next door after work. You want to take along? Well, it's only for a quick drink, like, it's no big deal. Oh, hey, any chance to get out and let me hair down? I'm not going to be staying long, are we, Peter? Are we? No, we're not. Oh, no, no. Just a quickie, like. Oh, sounds good to me. I'll see you later, then. See you, Tra. Why do I get the feeling I've just put your size tens in? Because I don't want her coming out with us. Why not? Because she's off her head. You seen what she was like the other week, making a show of herself? She just had a little bit too much to drink. Exactly. It's the same story every time. She's bad news. I don't want her hanging around. Oh. That Chambers wasn't much help, was he? He still might be able to do something. Yeah. I mean, if he's gone to the Thai Embassy, he must think we've got a case, mustn't he? What's the name of the fellow he's seen? Yeah. Got it here. That's him. Oh, God, I can't even pronounce this. I think I had that without fried rice last week. Yeah, that'll be him. Hey, where's the food? You've got it. Look, give it here, I'll get it. No, hey, it's okay, I'm hey, stuck. Hey, hey. Hey, much of it. Hey, false alarm. How much longer is he gonna be? Well, thanks again, Terry. Yeah, no problem. See ya. Yeah, see you, Mr. Crosby. Bye, old son. And you take care, right? For that, innit? Oh, all right, son. No, I'm not all right. Listen. I don't want to hear what you're going to say. Well, where are you going? Oh, what do you care? Oh, we've got a right to know. Where your mum and dad? Yeah, well, she's went. Look, I've said he can stay with me a while. With you? Yeah, well, it's better than being out on the streets, isn't it? No, he should be home here with us. I don't want to be anywhere near us. I hate the pair of you. Oh, Lee, don't say that. Come on, son. Well, don't come anywhere near me. I hate you. I never want to see you again. I think it's best if we get him back to my place. Look, you know where he is, and you know he'll be safe. He's gonna be keeping us waiting all day, or what? That's typical, isn't it? Hey, speed these people move, that's how Michael's gonna be looking to see the light of day again. He's probably having one of those ten-course banquets for his lunch. Got a bit of toffee apple stuck in his tooth. Just wish they'd hurry up. You know, if I'd have known we were going to take this long, I'd have nipped down to Oxford Street and had a look at the shops. You what? Well, we're not doing anyone any good here, are we? Oh, aye, aye, here we go. Hey, on, I'll get it. Hello? Yeah? Any news? Yeah? Yeah, OK, we'll be right there. Right, uh, he wants us back there now. This is it. Moment of truth. They've done it, Ron. They've got Mike out. Oh, Lindsay's coming back to us, kid. They both are. Our Lindsay and their Mike. That's right. We're getting the both of them out of that place. They're coming home. <laughs> Oh, 
There you are. I thought you'd gone out. No, planning a quiet night in, actually. Oh, right. Um, look, I know this is really short notice. But you need a babysitter. Yeah? How did you guess? Let's call it intuition, shall we? Oh, you don't mind, do you? No, on this occasion I could do with the company. Oh, thanks, Mr. Crosby. I know. I'm a star. <sighs> intuition, Samantha. Intuition. Oh, right, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you later then. Oh, and don't worry, I won't be late. Where have we heard that before, eh? Only two of us. How come? After your earlier meeting, Mr. Chambers feels it's best if we keep things as low-key as possible. So I suggest you nominate one person to speak for Michael and another for Lindsay. Fair enough by me. Yeah, sound. I think I can manage that. Um, I'll speak up for our Lindsay. Oh, great. What am I going to do? Hey, come on, love. Remember what Payne said. No argument, say. Eh? It's not going to do Michael Lindsay any favours, is it? All right. All for one and one for all, eh? Thanks, Sam. I'm dead on my feet. God, it's Friday night. The gob's on you two. Take it easy, Sam. It's only early. Hey, I'm only enjoying myself misery, guns. Did you phone your mum? She hasn't heard anything. My dad hasn't rang. God, I hope everything's OK. Hey, it will be. Don't worry. Yeah, that's right. Well, no news is good news, is it? Anyway, same again. I've still got a full one here. I'm all right, thanks, Sam. Yeah, me as well. Oh, sheep brown. Landed on my feet there, didn't I? Better get myself to them. Has she got hollow legs? She's gonna be legless at this race. I think she's just a bit excited. She doesn't get out much, you know, that Louise like. So, um, he didn't believe our story then? Well, it's not a question whether he believed you or not. You are. He's a diplomat, not a government minister. It's not up to him to decide whether your children should be released from jail. Well, if he can't get them out of jail, why did you bother going to see him? Oh, come on, Jack, we're wasting our time. It's a whitewash. No, no, just a minute. Please. Please, sit down. He's a representative of his country, and he's explained quite clearly the situation regarding Michael and Lindsay. And what is the situation? Well, they're accused of drug smuggling and are currently in jail awaiting charges. We've come all this way for you to tell us no, that. No, please, please, let me finish. I, I can see Mr. Newong's point about the circumstances leading to their arrest. I, I mean, I take it we are all agreed that Michael and Lindsay brought drugs into Thailand, aren't we? Well, yeah, but they were planted. And they were caught with these drugs in their possession. Yeah. But in a three-year-old teddy bear. But they were in possession of drugs. Yes, if you put it that way, but they were framed. God, haven't you listened to one word we've said? Of course I've listened, but you have to appreciate the Thai authorities' position. As far as they're concerned, your children are drug smugglers. Listen, we know how it looks. And they take these matters very seriously. They feel people have got the wrong idea about Thailand. They don't want the rest of the world to regard them as some kind of opium den. Tourists going there to buy drugs, sleeping with prostitutes. It's not an image they want to encourage. Yes, but that isn't our problem, is it? Unfortunately, it is, Mr. Dixon. Your son is in jail in Thailand for drug smuggling, so it's very much your problem. But he didn't do it! Thai authorities aren't going to go easy on your children. A serious offence has been committed and someone has to be punished. It's important to them that someone is seen to be punished so that other potential offenders can be deterred. God. We're never going to see them again, are we? They're going to throw away the key. But I did receive a firm indication that... The courts will be satisfied with only one conviction. What? They're only going to prosecute one of them? In cases like this, that's often what happens. You mean they're going to let one go and keep on locked up? As I say, it's very possible. But someone must be seen to be punished. Oh, God. Um, which one are they going to release? Sorry, Mr. Newong didn't give me any details. He may not have been in a position to say. But that's your best chance. <clears throat> Who's round, is it? Do you think you've had enough? Oh, she's a right bore, my little sister, isn't she? Right, 
Hey, Peter, get your band in your pockets. Come on, I'll have another one of these. Hey, do you mind? She's playing pocket billiards with me. Oh, come on, Casey. You stay there and keep Sam company. Oh, is this song again? Come on. Sammy, I'm knackered. Oh, come on. Don't be boring like the other two. She's drinking like a mania. She'll be all right. She'll calm down in a minute. Why, she's all over her. God. Hey, keep your hands to yourself. What's up? The dirty mare's all over me. I'm going home, have Oh, nice one, Sammy. Look, I'm going to ring me mum and get an off. See you later. Is he gay? No, he just doesn't like being touched up by drunks. <gasps> Who are you calling a drunk? Look at you. You're all over the place. You're a mess. You what? You're knocking it back like some old wino. You're an embarrassment. I'm ashamed of you. Casey. They're going to let one of them go. Well, there's no way they're going to keep our Michael locked up, is there? Of course not. He's done nothing wrong. No. And it was Lindsay's daughter who had the teddy bear, so I mean, that's bound to go against Lindsay, isn't it? Too right. Caught red handed. She's going nowhere. Just think of This time next week, our Michael could be old. Keep an innocent girl locked up, no chance, love. I mean, it's got to stand in her favour, hasn't it? You know, being a woman like a mother. Yeah, definitely. They'll go easy on them, kid, I'm telling you. Oh, Jimmy, she could be home any day. Yeah. Well, here's to a successful day, eh? Yeah, yeah. Said it was going to be our lucky day, didn't I? Eh? Yeah. Yeah, I'll in seeing your mic, eh? Yeah. Here's hoping they'll both be home soon, eh? Oh, sorry, have I got you out of bed? Bit early to be charging about, isn't it, love? What's to do? Uh, fax came for you from the House of Commons, no less, so I thought I'd better bring it straight over. Oh, thanks, love. Yeah, official note paper must be important. Yeah, thanks again. Yeah, you're welcome. Go. Bye. Oh, my God! Yes, this is it! Oh, Mike, it looks like they're letting them go and they're going to keep hold of Lindsay. Oh, no! oh. <laughs> Is this a private party or can no. anyone join in? Ron? <laughs> Bad, we've had some great news. Somebody has finally listened to us. They're doing something that lasts. What? Oh, God, I knew my prayers wouldn't go unanswered. What? It's our Mike. They're letting them go. He's coming home to them. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, fantastic! I can't believe our oh. Mike's coming home at last. Oh, God, my heart's pounding right into the dust. Hey, what about your heart? Down. Nonsense. This is the best medicine that I could have ever had. I feel like I've got a new lease of life. Oh, what about <laughs> the corkles? Oh, they'll be destroyed, poor beggars. Do you want me to go over and tell them? Uh, no. No, leave it, love. Um, I'll sort it out later, OK? <gasps> Come on, girl. 
Hi, hi, Bing. How's it hanging? Ah, so you're back. How'd you get on in London? Oh, cracker, yeah. Looks like things are going our way at last. Oh, really? So I take it James Payne is fully behind this Brookside, too? Oh, too right, yes. And the Foreign Office. They've been doing a little bit of ducking and diving for us, pulling a few political strings, you know. Really? So you think they might actually be able to get Michael and Minzy out? Well, it's looking good, you know. I mean, you went to see the Thai ambassador, and, uh, well, he was dropping hints left, right and centre. Reckons he can sort it. Really? Well, that's marvellous. I'm just going to give Ron my congratulations. Uh, Bing, uh, you've been a bit previous there, kid. See, the thing is, um, the Thai government is only going to let one of them go free. And, well, it's going to be our Lindsay, isn't it? Well, that's dreadful. I mean, it's very good for you, but... Yeah, I know poor Alvon is going to be gutted, like, but... Well, what's going to happen to Michael? Surely he can't be expected to stay out there alone and take all the flack. Oh, no, listen, no, we'll keep campaigning for him. I mean, you know, couldn't leave him in the lurch, could we? Have you been using my aftershave? I might have used a little bit. A bit? Go easy next time, will you? We don't want you being mobbed by gangs of women, do we? Shouldn't you be at school or something? Oh, none of them is. Look, I know this thing with your mum and dad has knocked you sideways, but you're going to have to try and get your heads round it, you know. How could she have blown all that money? £25,000. Talk about being gobsmacked. I did try and stop her, you know. Do you think she might have uh, gone mental or something? I'll get it. Hey. All right, Tilly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that Lee? Yeah. All right, Lee. Can we, uh, can we come in? Yeah, yeah, come on through. Thanks, Tilly. Hiya, love. I'm, uh, I'm just off to work anyway. Can't you stay for a bit? Er... Uh, I think it's best if it don't. Oh, go on. It's all right, sir. We don't mind you staying. Well, hang on. I mind. Oh, if it's one or Lee wants. Look, do you want a cup of coffee or something? No, yeah, go on. Love, we've got to sort things out. Yeah, I've seen your idea of sorting things out. Yeah, well, the lad's got a point, Rose. I'm going to ever trust you again after all you put him through. You're no better after what you've done. Going off with our Carl Sarah. Uh, right, I think I'd better go to work. Look, Lee. We know whatever we say can't make everything better. But we can't leave things the way they are. I'm not interested in what either of you have to say anymore. I'm on my own now. I'll sort my own life out. I know you're a bit upset with us at the moment, but if you just have a bit of time to think... You're not listening to me. The pair of you knocked me sick. I want nothing more to do with you. As far as I'm concerned, you're not me mum and dad anymore. I don't want to clap eyes on either of you ever again. Louise! What are you doing? Here, come on, let me help you. Huh? Samantha, could you step in here for a minute, please? Yeah. Samantha! Oh, God, all right, you have to shout. God, do you think the house was on fire? Hiya, babe. Are you aware that your daughter here has been attempting to prepare her own breakfast? Who knows what might have happened if I hadn't come in when I did? Oh, my head's banging. She is not allowed in this kitchen on her own. She could have electrocuted herself or something. What? On a bowl of cornflakes? Louise, darling, here. Now, that's it. Would you mind going and having your breakfast in Katie's room, eh? Here we are. Be careful. You go in Katie's room. That's a good girl. That's right. You should be ashamed of yourself. Your behaviour last night was appalling. You stagger in here at 2.31 a.m. singing Una Paloma Blanca at the top of your voice, disturbing the entire household. Yeah, I'm um, sorry about that, Mr Crosby. Listen, you haven't got two parasites, more, have you? And another thing. I absolutely refuse to be treated any longer like some sort of in-house babysitting service. It just is not. Yeah, all right, look, I've said I'm sorry. Can we talk about this later? I've got to go for a light down. 
Hey, we'll have to do the full Monty for him when he gets home. You know how much he likes his cooked breakfast. You'd think he was a big eater, would you? He's always been as thin as a ray. <laughs> I don't want to pick on him now. Where's the salt? Yeah. Hey, are you trying to kill him or what? We're on our salt free salt these days. Listen, Ron, I think I'll stay on for a bit when all Mike gets home. I need looking after. I think I can look after him till very much. Why don't we decorate his room? Oh, it'll be a nice surprise for him. He likes it the way it is. After that toilet he's been staying in, this place has seemed like Buckingham Palace. Oh, go on, Ron, we can dip into town today, choose some wallpaper. Oh, it'll be a nice surprise for him when he gets home. Well, we haven't got time now, have we? Did the facts say exactly when we could expect them? Let's have a look. There you go. Where's the other page? One other page, that's all there is. Well, all it says here is major developments. James Payne is flying to Bangkok later today. So does that mean Mike could be home tomorrow? Having secured a meeting with the Thai Ministers of Justice, we have every belief that there will be a positive outcome to the negotiations. Please await further communication. I'm confident that I'll be contacting you with positive news in the near future. Yours sincerely, PJ Slave, an assistant to James Payne. Well, there he goes, like I said, didn't he? <laughs> Ron, where does it say all Michael's coming home? Look, love. Dee Dee. That fella at the Thai Embassy said that one of them was going to be released, right? And now James Payne has sent this. A fax on official House of Commons notepaper. But look who it's addressed to. Mr. Ron Dixon. That's who, not Jimmy Corkill. Ron Dixon. It's their way of telling us that Michael's the lucky one. If it was Lindsay getting released, then Jimmy Corkill would have been the one to get the facts. It's obvious. Look, they can't just come out and say it, can they? They're not allowed. It wouldn't be diplomatic, would it? They've got to do things by the book. Just read between the lines. Our Michael is coming home. I know it. Are we going to get that wallpaper or what? This all seems so final. I, I just can't bear the thought of you taking all your mother's things away like this. Sorry, Dad, but I did promise Mum I'd take the rest of her stuff with me when I went back. Yes, yes, I know that. It's just that while they were still here, I could make myself believe she might come back one of these days. Now I have to accept the reality I might never see her again. Oh, Dad, don't be so melodramatic. She's only in France. You could take all this stuff out to her yourself if you wanted. No, Patsy, you know I couldn't do that. Well, I suppose I'd better tell Simba to hang fire on your garden. I've been hounding the poor black for days to get the work done. Well, it would be a nice surprise for Max if he ever decides to move out of Susanna's flat and come home. Yes, there is that, I suppose. Would you bring those two bags for me, Dad? Yes, yes, of course. Ron, you better get lively. The cool kills are on the way over. What? Oh, my God. Hi, Billy. Yeah. You're going to have to talk to them sometime. Yeah, but not now. Oh, Ron, we don't even know if it's Mike that's been released. I do. I know we're near you. Look, this is ridiculous. You're going to have to face them sometime, so um, why don't we do it now, I Get it over and do it. Hiya, come on in. Hi. Hiya. Hi, Ron. Hiya. Yeah. <laughs> what can I do you for? Took your time, didn't you, eh? Think it was the rent man or something? <laughs> We haven't heard anything yet, you know. Just wondered if it was worth giving that MP a ring. Yeah, you know, Batman's cage. Keep him on his toes. Actually, we did get word from him earlier. Well, we heard from his assistant, didn't we, love? Oh. Yeah, we were just on our way round now, to tell you. You see, there's been a development. Um, James Payne is travelling out to Bangkok later today. And it looks like he's definitely going to bring one of them back home with him. Oh, brilliant. Good. Uh, don't get your hopes up, though, love. You will. Look, I'm not being funny, but, uh... Well, it's our name that's on the top of the fax, not yours. So I'm sorry, but the news was meant for us. I know it's hard, but sooner or later you're going to have to face fax, and Mike's probably the lucky one who's coming home. Hang on, hang on. Your name at the top of the fax. That means nothing, there. This message was meant for all of us. Yeah, but that's not the only thing that we got going for us, is it? Oh, here we go again. Well, you can't deny it's your lot that's got the dodgy reputation, not us. I mean, that's got to count for something. Yeah, well, I'll tell you something that'll count for our Lindsay. Our little Kylie, she's in a right state. She needs a mum. Poor little thing. 
And she's gone to pieces since Gary did her on it. There's no way they're going to keep our little girl banged up while she's got a little kid pining away for her at home. Your Lindsay's not the only one with a kid, you know. How Michael's got a son and all, Josh. Are you trying to pull a fast one? Oh, you really are playing dirty now. Jimmy. You've been talking to this MP fella behind our back, haven't you? Hey? Filling his head with all sorts of rubbish. Is there nothing that you won't do? Hmm? Lying about your own son. Pretending that Mike is Josh's father. He's not lying. It's the truth. Mike is Josh's dad. Oh, I. So that's how it is. Share and share alike, eh? Very cosy. Jimmy, shut up. Yeah, and thanks to your lot, Josh might never see his dad again. This is all for sale, then? Yeah, that's right, Julia. Everything must go. Right. I'll see if I can get myself a bargain. Never bite a gift horse in the mouth. That's my motto. God, I can't stand it in there. It's like flaming vultures picking over the bones of our life. Yeah, well, we're just going to have to grin and bear it, aren't we? It... the bike's not for sale, all right? I thought we were selling everything. I know, I know. I just can't bear to see you part with your bike. We need the money. I'd feel a lot better if you kept it. Tell you the truth, I'd, I'd feel a bit less guilty. Do you think I could? 23 years of marriage, eh? What have you got to show for it? An owl bike. Bloody good bike, though, isn't it? This is killing me. Come on, Kevin, we'll be all right. Hey, soon be able to put all this behind You know, I wish I hadn't told Jimmy about Josh. I bet he thinks I'm a right one. I know, love. I'm sorry, it just slipped out. He got me all aerated. Yeah, he's got a gob on him like the Mersey Tunnel. But he spread it all over the place. I know. I'm sorry. I'm... I just wasn't thinking. I didn't know what I was saying. It's just, when I think of Josh, well, I think of him as ours, mine and yours. But you're the one who calls Dad at the end of the day. I want everyone to think that. Hiya. More tea? Uh, no, Tyler. Do you know, I think you're right. I've got a really good feeling about our Michael getting released. I've been praying to St. Jude, patron saint for those in desperate straits. Do you think there's a patron saint for sticking your nose in where it's not wanted? Love us. What are you doing? I'm checking it all here. It'll be no good for the sick children if there's a piece missing. Well, why? What's going on, like? Well, haven't you heard? The banks are selling up. Hey, there's bargains to be had if you look hard enough. Hey, this is all right, isn't it? I would give it house room. Any news of your Lindsay? Yeah, then. She should be home soon. You know, if all goes well, like. Oh, so they're letting her out? And what about Mike Dixon? Most of that lad that meets the eye, I'm telling you. How do you mean? You know that little Josh? Well, that's not Ron's kid. It's Mike's. Oh, do you know, I always knew there was something strange about that lot. They're like a bunch of interbleeding illy billies. Shocking, isn't it? You don't know the half of it. Who knows what goes on behind closed doors? I wonder what the arrangements are now. How do you mean, like? Well, you know, now that Dee Dee's back, I bet they're having a mangy tout. A what? You know, three in a bed. I've read all about it in the Sunday papers. Anyway, keep it to yourself, all right? Bob's your uncle. And Fanny's your aunt. Yeah. Hi, love, all right? Hey, uh... Hey, and don't you forget to pay for that, Jimmy Corkhill. Oh, God bless and save us if it isn't Sammy Rogers. How are you, love? Hi. Is this your little one? Oh, hasn't she shut up? Yeah. We're just going to the shops, aren't we, Lou? 
Hey, you better keep your eye on around here, love. The things that go on in this close make your ear kill. Oh, yeah. Take them, Dixons. It's like I hear them over there. Yeah. Collector's item these, mate. Go back as far as 1974. There you go. Uh... Ed? How much do you want for this old thing? It's bully. Yes, it's priceless, Dad. Yeah, I know enough cracker, you know, a new toy for it to chew on. Yeah, it's not for sale. Good charming. Do you know you left your front door open, love? And I've all sorts of no marks coming in. See what I mean? Load of rubbish, that. Can I take this for the sick children's room at the hospital? Everything's for sale, Julia. There's no freebies. Well, in that case, I'll give you 10p for it, and you're lucky to get that. You haven't got any antimacassars, have you? One of mine's acquired an unsightly stain. This isn't a shop, Julia. Well, there's no harm in asking, is there? And what do you want for this? Um, 450. What, for this old thing? I'll give you 30, Bob, and you're lucky to get that. God, they're enjoying every minute of it. Jimmy Corkle couldn't wipe the smile off his face. How much you want for this, love? Oh, he's a corker, isn't he? Eh? You'll have to knock a few bob off there, won't you, because it's the end of April. Hello. What's all this, then? You've been treating yourself? Oh, no, no, no. This is just something for Louise, Samantha's youngster. A few educational books I think she needs. No, oh, that's very sweet of you, you old softy. She's a very bright child, you know. Unfortunately, her talents are not being given the attention they deserve. It's difficult for Samantha, of course, being a single parent. It's always the children that suffer when the parents split up. Dad, if you're trying to make me feel guilty, forget it. I feel bad enough already. No, 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 Patsy, that wasn't my intention, you know that. How am I going to break it to Thomas that he won't be living with his dad anymore? <sighs> Patricia. I implore you, please don't take the children to that place. Dad, I really do think you're letting your imagination run away with you. It's not a commune, it's a holiday centre, and there were no lesbians or hippies there, as far as I could see. But think of their futures. They need to grow up in a stable family environment. In an ideal world, yes, but do you really think it's better for them to live in a house where their mother and father can barely exchange a civil word? Can't you give Max another chance? Dad, I tried that when I came back. I don't think it's my decision anymore. That's that. We've made the princely sum of 107 pounds 43p. Oh, and uh, a Spanish peseta. Oh, what a day, eh? Nightmare from start to finish. Well, at least things can only get better now. We've got nothing else to lose, have we? Only the house. Got to be out of here this Friday at the latest. Well, there's nothing left to stay for, is there? Not been a bad house, this, is it? Had some good times here. I did, don't. I can't bear it. So, this is it, then. It's all over. Looks like it. Um, so, uh, what do you think you'll do next? Well, stay at Joey's just to find somewhere else to stay, you know. He said it was okay. What about you? Um, I'll know who's having me. So, um, You'll be all right, will you, um, at Joey's? His missus doesn't mind you staying? No, no, it's, it's, it's fine. I'll probably get uh, fixed up with a flat or something soon anyway. Uh, your mo, she, uh, she OK with you staying there, yeah. is she? You know our mo. She's brilliant. She's dead supportive. Yeah. Yeah, she'll, uh, She'll probably be glad of the company anyway, yeah. I mean, it must be lonely 
live on the island. Look, I know he's not the easiest person in the world to live with, but surely you can Dad, work Dad, I can't trust him. He lied to me. He looked me straight in the eye, and he lied to me. And not just once, lots of times. He'd have kept that whole business with the prostitute from me forever if he could. Anyway, now he's gone. Moved in with Susanna. And frankly, I'm not prepared to hang around and find out what else he might have been lying about. Yes, but I'm sure he doesn't have anything to do with that prostitute. I really believe he's telling the truth. Well, it's kind of irrelevant whether he did or not. The fact is, I believed he could. I didn't trust him. <laughs> what use is a marriage without any trust? Well, tell him that, then. Tell him that, talk it through, tell him how you feel. I mean, have another try, please. Dad, please, don't put any more pressure on me. This is really bad enough. But, Patricia, you... you can't just throw away seven years of marriage like this, can you? I mean, what about everything you've been through together? He loves you, you know. He loves you, and he loves the children, and he needs you. You think? Oh, come on. Go and talk to him, at least. Please. I'll tell you something. You'll regret it if you don't. A selection of Brookside books are available from bookshops. True. Going back to France. Dad. So you can tell your father, but you can't even be bothered. You're just gonna go without even telling me. Look, Patricia, whatever it is you think I've done to you, I don't deserve this. Taking the children, leaving the country without even saying goodbye. I was going to tell you. When? Halfway across the channel by semaphore? Hello, Max. I'm leaving you. Goodbye. Sod off. End of message. I'd have told you when I was ready. There's things we have to decide. Oh, I see. So you were actually going to involve me, were you? Look, Max, it's That's really... That's really magnanimous of you. What insignificant little decision about my future have you left for me to sort out? This is your decision, Max. You've walked out on me to live with Susanna. OK, OK. I apologize for not sleeping with my ex-wife. I apologize for not going with a prostitute. I apologize unreservedly for putting you 100% in the wrong. This is not just I'm about... I'm beginning to all... wish I had gone. All of this would make some kind of sense. <laughs> It's not a formal separation. Well, what is it's it? Just... Because I, I'd like to define our terms here. I'd like to know what you've decided for my future. I just need some time away from here. Away from me, that's what you mean, isn't it? Right, so it is a separation. OK, it's a separation! Right! Packing Thomas's things? Yes. All his things? Yes. When will I see him? Whenever you want. Probably about as often as you see him now. Oh, knives out, eh? Well, to be honest, oh, like thanks, how often thanks you Thanks a lot. What a bitch of a thing to say. Oh, in character, then? Well, since you mentioned it. So you are calling me a bitch? Yeah, if the cat fits. Well, go on, then. Go on, don't hold back. I mean, you made it pretty clear what you think of me, bitch, cow. Go on, what else? Go on. See? 
That's why. That's why I've got to get the kids away from here. Only you notice what it's doing to them, watching us rip the guts out of each other all the time. I don't... Um, you better tell me which one of these CDs you still want, which ones you still want to keep. Oh, I see. That's the insignificant little decision you've left for me. You decide we're separating forever, and, uh... I choose which CDs I want. Die strays. Well, you're the Mark Knopfler fan. Am I? Yep. Thought you were. No, you were. Well, I'll take these then. What, you too? No, no, no. Mm. You too. No, I want these. You have that. Die Straits, it is yours. Yes, it is. I bought it for you as a surprise present in London when I was working there. You know, that time when you came down. When? You know, that time that we. You know, that's oh, I remember now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, had dinner in that uh, Italian place, yeah. didn't they? Um, done all those stuff. Yes, no way to say. Hey, Signor, Signor, you want a room? You want a room for? Uh... You give me a five a quid. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours. I'm not disturbed. No, 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 you sound like Harry and Fields. <laughs> no, I don't. You do. It's supposed to be Italian. You want the key? You want? Yeah. <laughs> do a brilliant Italian accent. Oh. Hey, Signor, you give me five a quid. I give you a key. <laughs> And keep my hands off you. I was. Well, that's always been your problem, hasn't it, Max? Never been able to keep your hands off anyone. Anybody in? This is yours. M.G. Farnham Geography Prize, 1975. <laughs> geography. I failed O level geography. What did they give me? Metaphysical love poetry. Well, you could always read selected extracts to Susanna in bed. What's that? Well, I just thought... No, 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 I'm having that. Oh, oh my... I've still got the uh, suntan oil stains, you know, from the villa. Xanthos. Yeah, Xanthos, remember? Remember the lemons? Max, please, don't make this any harder than it already is. Don't make this any harder than it already is? I'm going to make this as tough for you as I know how. Why should I make it easy for you? You're the one who's kicked seven years of marriage into touch. You're the one who's thrown our honeymoon into the reject pile. It's just a guidebook, Max. Yes, but I kept it. I still got the uh, menu from the pub in Bolton. Got the beer map with, um, with the telephone number on it. I'm sorry, I, I can't, you know. I, I can't. Is this what you really want? I just want some peace. What now? <sighs> Sinbad. Oh, you're in. I did not, but I got no answer. I need to get to your uh, stop cock. God. Look, it's not convenient at the moment. If you'd like to come back tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, or next week sometime. Look, if I can just get everything connected up and working. Oh, do whatever you like. Dig the whole place up. Oh, dear. Patricia, my darling, I think you'd better go back inside and have a word with Max. I can't, Dad. I've got to pick up the kids from school. D -d Don't worry. That's all arranged. Rachel will pick them up and we'll feed them. Go on. There's no point, Dad. In the kitchen under the sink. Oh. The stopcock. Oh, right, sir. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> just a minor domestic disagreement, you know. Yeah, thought it might be. Nothing serious, just a little tiff. All the stupid times to choose. What are you doing? Making Simba a cup of tea. A cup of... Oh, for God's sake. Come in, everybody, come in. Tickets at the door. Stop through the kitchen, drink our tea, dig up the lawn. I mean, my wife is leaving me, but it doesn't really matter. Let's get our priorities right. Let's get that bloody lawn sprinkler in. Yes! Uh, can I just... Uh, it's under there, Sinbad. You'll probably need a wrench or something yeah, like that. Sec. Shouldn't you be getting back to the restaurant? Sod the restaurant! Uh, Bing! Four bricks up, mate! What the hell is that noise? He's just knocking through. We're gonna have the whole wall down. For heaven's sake! I mean... 
Do you have to do that? Well, I thought since he'd started, we might as well get it finished. My marriage is collapsing. My house is collapsing. Oh, yeah, it's going to look tops out there when I'm finished with it. I'll tell you what, Pat. We've got a lovely little magnolia tree there, and it grows dead wild. Five years from now, that pagoda thing of yours is going to be covered in blossoms. Mm. Oh, sir, thanks. Yeah, that's the, uh that's the thing about gardens, isn't it? You're planting stuff and that. It's like a stake in the future. I mean, I can just imagine you two, five years from now, sipping wine under your roses. And I'll tell you what, I'll get out of your there, shall I? So, we've got trenches in our garden and we've got a dirty great hole in our wall. Do you want to go, Buddy? Oh, what are you doing, Patricia? What's happening here? I mean, here we are, in the middle of what could be the, the biggest crisis of our lives. And we're talking about CDs and books and do you want a cup of tea? No, I do not want a cup of tea. I want you. I want us. I, I want things to get back to how they were. They can't, though, can they? Yes, yes, they can. Unless... You'd have to change, Max. Well, I... Yeah, you're right. No, I will. I will. Prove it, then. Come with me. What, you mean? To France? Yeah, you can still pick up property, dead cheap. There, you can pick up an old stone cottage with land for just 50 grand. What about the restaurant? Sell it. <laughs> I can't just do that. Yes, you can. Just let it go. <laughs> the restaurant, Susanna, this house, the lies. Just let the lot go. Max, we could start again from scratch with no baggage. Just us. Us and the kids. But, no, hang on. <sighs> Is that the best you can do? Hang on. No, wait. No, we've got to be practical. Do you still love me? <laughs> it's not that simple. No. Hang on, listen, wait. Let's be fair. You can't just throw everything we've worked for, everything on a whim. It's not a whim, Max, it's a chance. But listen, darling, no, we've got to be practical. My life is here. Right. Wait a minute. Forget it, Max. You won't change. All I'm saying is, is that we can't throw our only source of income out of the window. Not without... Forget it, stupid idea. No, it's not a stupid idea. Now, look, turn it around. Do you love me? I certainly don't like you very much anymore. I haven't liked you much for months. Uh, you're Miss Sanctimonious number one in the popularity stakes, are you? See, it's easy, isn't it? It's easy to keep your hands clean and, uh, and play Miss Morally Nice because you're the one who doesn't have to go out and make any money. You're the one who doesn't have to worry about the business of trying to make a living. You... And who's going to pay for this little jaunt, eh? You presume that you can just swan off to France and good old Max will foot the bill. I don't need your money, Max. I'm going to be working for Jane. Working for... <laughs> oh. That's right. Yeah, rubbish it. Rubbish everything I do because I'm used to it. You treat the gift box like it's some silly little hobby of mine. I gave up a whole career for you. Oh, here we go. You don't know the half of it. I could be having some massive London PR agency by now. I could be... Oh, get out! Get out! You're gonna kill me, then? Get back to your beloved restaurant and your nymphomaniac ex-wife. We'll start again. You can have your holiday in France. And Thomas, he can have two weeks in the sun. And I'll, I'll start looking for... Thomas. He needs a break. Thomas needs a break. I know how upset he's been by all this. And what about Alice? How upset do you think she's been? You haven't mentioned Alice once yet. Wow. No, you haven't. Not once. You still wish that I'd had an abortion. Patricia. Oh, it's all right. Just forget all the PC stuff. Tell me the truth. Or suppose we'd had her adopted at birth. Um, I'm not listening to this. You'd have been able to wipe her out of your head then, wouldn't you? Oh, easily. That's why you spend so much time at the restaurant or playing normal families with Susanna. Because you still can't quite face up to it. And you really don't want to be around when Alice stops being cute and turns into a lumbering freak. Stop it. 
Well, that's how you see her, isn't it? An embarrassing freak. So, OK, why don't we go to social services tomorrow? Tell them that you can't cope, that we'd like her taken off our hands. Would you sell up grants and go to France with me then? Shut up! Anything happening? Hang on. Don't want it down! I can't no. stop the damn thing! Don't you accuse me of not loving my daughter! Well, do you? Do you? I won't be a sec. Ow! Oh. No, oh, it's all right, Max. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I, I know you do try to love her. <laughs> Look at you. Quick, strip off. You're soaking. Why are you making all puddles? What? <laughs> Look at the state of us two, eh? You'll catch your death. You need a hot bath. Should be yours, shall I? Go on, I mean, some of your bath. No, is that a good idea? Best idea I've had all day. Oh, it's all right. I'll only be five minutes, then I'll make you a fresh one, yeah? Plaster, have you? Bathroom cabinet. I'm just going to make some tea. Okay, cheers. Where did you suddenly disappear off to? Go on then. Jump in before you catch your death. Oh, oh, quick. Flannel. Flannel. Ooh. Ah, flannel. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> Always used to have baths together, didn't we? God. Confession time, right? Do you know, I've never seriously had a fantasy in my whole life about anyone except you. Sad, really. What was you? Can I ask you a straight question? When you made love to me, did you ever imagine it was Susanna? Okay, you did, didn't you? Don't need to answer. I know you did. You used her name once. I never said anything. Too hard. Three of us in this marriage too, eh? She is still your biggest fantasy, isn't she? Max? Max? This wedlock business, it's damn tough, I can tell you. It's not for the faint-hearted. Yeah, well, animals seem to manage it, don't they? I mean, look at swans, they stay out, stay faithful for life. Yeah, obviously on a higher moral plane than homo sapiens. Yeah, well, I'd stick at it if I could find the right woman. I keep thinking I have and then it doesn't work out. I'm 39 now. I've got much time left. Good God, Sinbad. That's my line, not yours. Leave it alone. Oh, well, it seems to be easy enough for other people. There's a misrise on every corner. Get married, get divorced, find another misrise. Oh, ah, oh, be careful, be careful. I tell you what, if there was an exam if you had to take before you got married, I'd sail through the theory, but the practical... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, old son. Right, let's get that uh, light turned on there and get finished. Come on, it's getting dark. Where did you go to? When? Oh, can you turn the light on? Oh, my eyes are still stinging, you know. Still? Still stinging from that shampoo I got in them. You know, when you handed me the flannel. You handed you a flannel? Yes, she did. And you left another one in here, all covered in blood. Have you cut yourself? Blood? Oh. Done. Just switching the electricity off, Max. Two minutes. Look, um, I, I've been trying to get my head round all of this. Uh, oh, no. And if you're sure you think this is right. It is. Well, maybe. Suppose we said three months. 
Let's not put any time limits on it, Max. I mean, I could be back in six days or um, six weeks or... Maybe this time. God. I've made a mess of things again, haven't I? Not just you. I do love you. It's not enough, though. So, what do we do now? Do we get in touch with our solicitors? Oh, no, not solicitors again. <laughs> I mean, last time they had us dividing the washing machine into equal parts, it, it doesn't matter who has what. It, it's not important. I don't care. It, I just want you to sort out your feelings about Susanna. I don't love her. But you can't quite get her out of your system. No. Know where we went wrong. <laughs> should never have got married again. I mean, seriously, it should be illegal. It should be a law against getting married within three years of a divorce. Gosh, sounds a bit draconian. I mean, people go on about how oh, it's too easy to get divorced, but um, it's not divorce. It's marriage that's too easy. I mean, God, anyone can do it. Even us. Anyone can do it, and it's just so painful. So painful to undo. Everyone loses. Except the lawyers. Make a fortune. Yeah, on the back of everyone else's misery. And it's... It's always the kids who get hurt the most when everything falls apart. Power restored! But not ours, though, eh? Not if I can help it. I don't want ours to suffer. Uh, the damage I caused Matthew and Emily and the hell I caused when uh, Susanna took the children to America. Won't be like that, Max. No, I promise. Won't. What about schools? Well, Thomas will cope. I mean, um... There's a local lycée, and I mean, he is, he's kind of at that age when kids can almost pick up languages overnight. And Alice? I'll find all the right help for Alice. Promise you, Max. You know, one of these days, I'm going to make you really proud of her. Ready, sir, Matt? Yeah, go ahead, Bing. Ladies and gentlemen, let there be light. Oh, what the hell? It's all right. Don't panic. No casualties. No casualties? Probably blown up the entire garden now. Just going to try and get the mains back on. Probably destroyed the national grid. <laughs> Demolished half the clothes, eh? Poor Dad. Never really got to grips with electricity. Bit of a disaster on our hands, old son. I, I'll tell you what we'd better do. Uh, no. Pardon? Look, leave this to me. You go inside and see what's happening. Oh, right. Uh, better yet. If you're managed guidance skills and anything like your DIY skills, you might be better off standing here with a torch. Symbolic, really. The end of a marriage. Not with a whimper, but with a bang. And no jokes. No, I was... I was going to say... I am. What? Whimpering inside. Oh, Max. I can't believe this is it. Nor me. All the times I used to wait for you in the car park in Walton when we first met. 
I used to be sick with excitement all morning at work, and I'd drive in, and I'd see you waiting there. And I think that's the man I want to spend the rest of my life with. Tell them today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So, this is the end then. Payne's even selling a car to take us to the airport. Yeah, it says one British national, though, Ron. I mean, that could be Lindsay. Ed, it's all Michael. It's got to be. This is the second fax that they've addressed to me, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but you've got Bev, to... it's got to be Michael. If it would have been Lindsay that they were letting go, they'd have sent us to the Corkills, wouldn't they? Corkills haven't got a fax, then. I'm going to tell Dee Dee. Will you nip round the close now that our Jackie know that her big brother's on his way home? Oh, Ron, don't get your hopes up. I can't believe it. Oh, Michael coming home. Hey, Corkill, what's all this? Just a welcome home gesture for my little girl. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm very sorry to disappoint you, but I've just had official notification that it's our Michael who's on the way home. I think you've got your facts wrong there, mate. He yeah, what? James Payne's lackey sent this round to me this morning. Jackie's at Airvals now. Getting the buffet ready for our Lindsay's welcome home party. It's here in black and white. My son is on that plane right now, sipping champagne. Just leave a day, Ron. I think we should all just wait and see. Suits me, Bing. Just hope you're not too disappointed when it's my Lindsay getting off that plane. Hey, don't you worry, Corkill. Won't be me crying in his beer when our Michael's back where he belongs. Yeah, I made you a cup of tea. Ta. Uh... Hey, what's this? Nothing. Have a look. Hey, it's dead good, that. It's crap. You got them off to a tea. Okay, except the smile in there. Come on. Look, they're going through a rough patch. We all have our ups and downs, you know. Yeah, well, it's been nothing but downs for months now. They can be a real pain, parents, can't they? Always reckon they know best when, half the time, they haven't got a clue. Now tell me about it. Trouble is, you stuck with them. And they don't have to be, do I? No, you can always stay here, blank them out, pretend they don't exist. Suits me. The thing is, you can do what you like, but they're still your mum and dad. Yeah, I know. And nothing you do is going to change that. Do you really want to spend the rest of your life regretting some brow you had when you were, what, 15? 16. Why don't you give them another chance, eh? 
Go round and see them. Try and talk to them. Try and sort it out. Oh, I bet you feel dead bad leaving it all like this. Yeah, this was going to be my great success story. Still, time to move on. Right, well, I suppose I'd better go. See which toys Thomas and Alice can bear to be parted from. No, don't they mind moving to France? No, they think it's a huge adventure. Oh, won't they miss the dad and the granddad? Well, it's only a few hours away. Oh, poor Mr Crosby, he's gonna have no one. You, um, you'll keep an eye on him for me, won't you? Yeah, of course. And you will be coming back, won't you, for visits? You don't really think I'd lose touch with everyone just like that, do you? I'll get it, love. I've come to retain this. It doesn't go with me, sweet. You what? Throws in here, is she? Oh, how are you, love? Hiya. Ooh, looks a lot bigger now without all your bits in it, doesn't yeah. it? I always thought they'll pokey these houses. Even the farm hands are no bigger than mine, Just you know. something you wanted, Julia. It's this. It's the wrong shade of shade. Bit too glarish when I got it home. So I'll buy a new one. Have you seen the price of a decent shade? You bought it at a house sale, Julia, not your general lease. Eh? Well, seen it since you can't go throwing our money around like a man with no arms. Just give us the money, Ed. Ta, love. And I hope you'll both be very happy in your new home. Um, where do you say it is again? It's uh, out the area, isn't it, Rose? Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's a really nice place. Well, I hope you'll invite me to the house warming. Ta-da! Yeah, see you, Julia. Nosy cow. I don't want anyone our business. Hello, Patricia. Susanna. You come to measure for new curtains? Not today, thank you. Uh, please. I haven't come for a fight. I just want to make sure you're doing the right thing before it's too late. Yui! Dave! Oh, hey, that was how you do your patch yesterday, wasn't it? I hate that the fire brigade and all sorts. Oh, for heaven's sake, Julia. It was just a piece of faulty wiring. There's nothing that Sinbad and I couldn't cope with. Listen, I'm not one for gossip, but I wouldn't go in there if I was you. I beg your pardon? Your patch got a visitor. Oh, really? I don't suppose you happen to notice who it was. The other Mrs. Farnham. Ah, I see. Your patch and Max still having problems? No, no they're fine. When you with your Jean being away, I thought maybe your pack could do a talking things over another woman. You know, a sort of Harrogate mother-like. And uh, you're offering yourself, I suppose. We all have to help each other to go along, don't we, Dave? <laughs> oh, I've just been over to the banks. Terrible sad that house has not a stick left in it. I've been doing a bit to cheer them up, like. Yes, I'm sure you have, Julia. Away. It looks like Mike and that Lindsay are coming back home again from the Eastern Orient then, doesn't it? I don't think it's quite that definite, actually. I believe one of them might be coming home. All right, Bing. Julia. Hi, hello. Ron, any news? I've just been around the shop. Get these for our Michael. Look at his all sorts. They're his favourite. I've been ever since he was that high, you know. Just thought that'd uh, make him feel more at home. <laughs> Ron, um, I don't want to put a damper on things, old son, but don't build up your hopes too high, will you? You know the vagaries of officialdom. Don't you worry about me, mate. I know our Michael's on his way. Just got this feeling. Right, well, anyway, I have to get on. See ya. Hey, I bet it's dead exciting for them out there. It's like being on that blind date, both of them wondering which one's going to be picked for the big trip. <laughs> We've got a visitor, Rose. Yeah, I'm with you anyway. Hello, Mum. Hello, love. How are you? Okay, so. You eating all right? Yeah, me and Terry take it in turns to do the cooking. Be on that Master Chef next day, son. <laughs> Mum, Dad, I'm sorry. What for? Well, for what I said the other day. Ah, no, you were right, son. We've let you down, both of us. Just come back, love, please. 
Back away. We haven't even got a home anymore. Well, come with me to um, our mosey. What about me, Dad? Where are you going? Well, I'll be staying at Joey's. So that's it, then. There's a defo splitting up. Yeah. <sighs> Nothing's changed, has he? Oh, Lynn, love, please don't go. Look, you've got to stay with one of us. <sighs> Why do you make me choose? I can't. I want to be as a both of us together, properly. I'm sorry, Lynn. Oh, I know it's a hard son, but... Look, all I know is that you're all we have. All the rest is just... it's just gone. Oh, I don't know how that happened or why, but it's just disappeared. You're all we have left, Lee. No, I'm not. You have got each other and all. It's too late, son. Why? Why is he? Too much has gone on, Lee. We've hurt each other too much. So you're punishing me to get back at each other? No. It's not like that. Why can't you just stay together? All I want is for us to be a normal family again. <sighs> all right. I'll come with you, Mum, to my Auntie Moe's. Oh, thank you. But only if my dad oh. comes and all. Of course I've thought of the children. Hardly been able to think of anything else. Patricia, I know what it's like bringing up two children on your own. It's tough and it's lonely. Come on, Susanna, you're hardly the archetypal single parent struggling to make ends meet. Well, maybe not. That doesn't mean it hurt any less when Max left me for you. You know how much I loved him. Look, I'm not pretending I still don't have feelings for him. But it's nothing to do with what's happening between the two of you. How can you say that when he's living with you? He's lodging with me, that's all. No, I'm not talking about you and Max having sex. Actually, I don't think for one moment that you are. I'm talking about something far more dangerous than sex. I'm talking about loving someone and caring for them. And you're an enormous part of Max's life, you and the children. You always will be. And that's what I can't handle. He'll never be able to move on from you. He's the father of my children. I suppose if I'm honest, I'm jealous of everything that you share with Max that I'm not part of. <laughs> There's nothing to be jealous of. It's you he loves. Max has got feelings for both of us. But I want to be the only one in his life. I can't cope with you being part of the equation. We're bound to have no luck living next door to that house. First the jaw dashes and a murder investigation, now a bunch of druggies. Not exactly a good luck to you, is it? Oh, we can hardly blame the neighbours for what's happened. Had so many hopes for this place, didn't he? Where'd they get us? Every kids, anything will go on and on down the years. I thought we'd be watching our grandkids grow up here. Buying them sweets, taking them to the park. But it's all gone, Rose. Lee, our Carl Becker. And I don't mind taking my first year of the blame. Rosie, me and Sarah, it was... You know, I can't forget that, Eddie. Ever. No. No, you're right. I think maybe we've given each other enough pain. Oh, Dad, the car's here. At last. Come on, you lot. I'll keep the show for waiting. Mum, I'll just go and grab my bag from ours. Okay. Be a shock too after all that heat. Don't want the lad catching cold, do we? Are you all set, mate? Yeah. Nice one. Great. Excuse me, mate. You parked in the wrong place. James Penn sent the car for us to Dixon's number eight. Stay hang on. We're calling round the bells. Going to pick up Jackie and little Carly. This is an official government car, and we're getting in it. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. We won't all fit. The size of it? Got to send to the limo. Listen, Corkill, we're getting in this car if it kills us. Good luck. We're all keeping our fingers crossed. I'm just worried about my dad. If our mic's not on that plane, we will be. Okay. I'll see you later. Yeah, I hope it is your mic, Jack. 
We could do with another nice looking fella around here, couldn't we? It's just awful hanging around waiting. Well, there's not much else we can do. Ain't sent this car for we us. We won't all oh, get in. Leave it, leave it. We'll go in your car. Hey, I'll not get them that poxy thing while he's travelling in style. Well, suit yourselves. Oh, just do one, eh? Give us your keys, Dad. I'll drive. Hey, ask Max if we can borrow his car. I'll give Olga with you, Beth. Well, we left from the Metro, didn't we? By cork hill. What? You just make sure that you enjoy this ride, because in a couple of hours from now, it'll be us now, Michael Swan and Omen style. Let's go. I'm not sure that Max will ever come to terms with having a child like Alice. But he loves her. Yeah, I'm sure he does. In his own way. It's just not quite how he pictured it. The second Mr and Mrs Farnham and their two beautiful children. He thinks the world of you and the children. As he does of you and yours. I think we're back where we started. Funny, really. It's almost as though we swap roles, you and I. How do you mean? Well, I've ended up with the real-life version. The grumpy home from work, Max. The washing of the dirty socks, Max. And you've ended up with the Max who's all sweetness and light. You always did have a low boredom threshold. Yes, well, I seem to recall that's how we got together in the first place. I think there's only one solution to all of this. We should share him. Surely between us we ought to keep him satisfied. And furthermore, I'd just like to put on record that our MP, Jimmy Payne, has done us proud. He sent a car for us the lot, didn't he? It's thanks to him that our daughter's going to be back home soon where she belongs. And I'll tell you something, when them elections come round again, it's going to be James Payne and his lot who's going to be getting our vote. Look at him, the slime they get. Just ignore him, Dad. Trust him to rock the limelight. Not much of a fanfare for our Michael, though, is it? We don't need fanfares, Ron. Just our Mike home safely. Come on, love. Make yourself comfy. I can't just sit there waiting. Come on, it won't be much longer, Dad. Yeah, well, you lot can sit round here looking at the walls, not me. Where are you going, love? We've got to check our Michael's planes on time. dream this place will be next. I say, Eddie, Rosie, I, I just wanted to say how awfully sorry I am. <sighs> yeah, well, you and me both, Dave. Look, I, I came over to wish you well and say goodbye from, well, all the residents of the close. Thanks, Dave. Cheers. Eddie, uh, look, I do hope there's no ill feelings about all that lottery business, I mean. Neither Jean nor I would have wanted this to happen to anyone. That's all in the past, Dave. Let's just forget it, eh? Right, well... Goodbye and, uh, and good luck. Yeah. Bye, Rosie. Thanks, Dave. Uh, look, I'm gonna take the bike for a spin. Where are you going? I just need time to think. Mr. Crosby. Look, if I promise to be in dead early, will you mind our Louise? I've told you, no. Oh, go on. Prissy, please. No, Sam, it's not fair. She's your kid. Yeah, but, well, I need a break once in a while. Once in a while? It's every other night. You're surely not going out again, are you? Oh, you'll mind our Louise, won't you, Mr. Crosby? I mean, you're the only one who can keep her entertained. Look, I'm sorry. Much as I'm fond of the child, she does need her mother occasionally. Oh, it's just for tonight, honest. Look, a couple of hours, that's all. Don't, Mr. Crosby, she'll be coming in all hours. Casey! Uh, no, Samantha, I'm sorry. This time, I really must put my foot down. Oh, you dead mean, you two. And you're dead selfish. No wonder I haven't left you. Hey, you cheeky cow, just cos you can't get a fella. Really? Sammy! Well, I'm going out now, anyway. So you'll have to look after Louise, won't you? Do you want a coffee, love? 
kind of wash with this stuff. How much longer, Jimmy? I can't stand this sitting around. I know, I know. But it'll be worth it. See the look on our Lindsay's face when she walks through them doors. God, I hope you're not. Because if it's not our Lindsay, it's in a world. Hey, 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 shush, come on. Hello. Not much longer. So we'll have our little girl back with us again. Oh, sit down. You're going to be fit for nothing. How can I when they keep putting Michael's flight back? Dad? Dad, the thing's changing, look. Oh, no, another hour. Can't that pilot put his foot down or something? Living away quietly. Yeah. They want the old close watching. <sighs> Look, Rose, um. I know it's not much, but uh, at least it'll give you a bit of a start. What is it? I saw me bike. How do you know? You love that bike? Yeah, I know, but uh, the money would be of more use, won't it? Right then. Lock it off. Yeah. See ya. Last. Come on, kid, this is it. Oh. All right. Hey. Lee. We're off to Elmo's. Me and your dad. Together. You coming, son? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, here they come. It's all Mike. Where? There, I think. Mike! Oh, my God. He'll be here. Come on, Lindsay. She's not coming. Oh, please, God. Come on, Mike. Hey, there he is. Where? Oh, no, it's not him. Oh, hey, hey! Hey, shift, will you? I can't see. Hey, I think that's Jimmy Payne, isn't it? Get it, Tim. He's got someone with him. Hey, come on, shift, will you? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Oh, don't start, Sam. You were well out of order leaving me with Louise. Oh, give it a rest, eh? Sing, Katie. What on earth's going on? Oh, God. And who, may I ask, is this? He's just a friend. Um, what did you say your name was again? He's asleep in there. You are a total disgrace. Have you no shame? Carrying on like this with your own daughter under the same roof? Oh, I'm putting the cat off. Oh, no, you don't. You out. Come on. That young man is not putting one foot over my threshold, and as for you, any more of your shenanigans and you're out. 